On the 9th of December, Agricultural Minister O'Neill Collier and Labor Minister Lori Sigurdsson answered questions about the controversial Bill 6 at a forum in Olds, Alberta. Despite the weather, Albertans came in droves looking for answers to their questions from the government that represents them. The forum was preceded by a Kill Bill 6 rally and rural residents formed a convoy of mostly farm equipment from car stairs to Olds to protest the legislation. During the forum in Olds, Bill 6, which pertains to labor code, privacy law and occupational health and safety regulations, was ushered through the third reading in the legislature. At the rally, tensions ran high, and many at the rally in Olds were concerned with the lack of consultation and transparency during the bill's earlier stages. The authority of all rural municipalities urges the provincial government to slow or stop the process to ensure that the voices of farmers and industry leaders are heard and to allow the involvement of provincial ministries the adequate time to process the feedback and deliberate what can be incorporated to improve the legislation. The provincial government needs to ensure they are being transparent and listening to all burdens. When OHS guys show up at my door and tell my son that he can't drive the tractor that he paid for himself, what are they going to do for me and for him? Because they are the future of our province, not the NDP. My question is, would you consider putting a moratorium on premiums to ease the implementation of WCB on farms and ranches in Alberta five to ten years? You know, I hear your concern and I hear, uh, uh, you know, your us and I've written it down and we'll take that back. Why exactly are we telling people that they must have WCB when there are other insurance options that a lot, from what I've heard, a lot of people say are a lot better. They provide better coverage, there's less of a battle. I mean, if you look at WCB right now, the number of, you know, outstanding lawsuits there are, people battling to try to get coverage, it's, it's unbelievable. So, why, why, why must it be WCB? Please add choices to this amendment for asking you to do this. Let us have choices of who we choose as an insurer. We do strongly, strongly believe in the benefits of WCB as a form of no-fault insurance that protects the, the worker as well as, well as, the, well as the, the farmer, rancher, as an employer. I think that's the fear with a lot of people is that, you know, they're going to, the WCB is going to find a way to not pay them, yet we're going to have to pay into it. And from speaking with a lot of, uh, you know, friends and family around the area you know, that have looked at the WCB coverage, they really aren't in agreement that we have some of the lowest rates around. It's no fault insurance. So uh, then there can be uh, compensation and resolution quite quickly. Whereas if there's a disagreement, if there's a disagreement regarding that, they often have to get lawyers, it costs a lot of money. And so the, the family of the injured worker, deceased worker, uh, goes for a period of time without any kind of compensation. The rates posted are available on our website, and so you were correct, uh, cattle is on the higher end, but they do range from $1.70 to $2.97 for every $100 of payroll. We are a no-fault insurance to guys. So we are a no-fault insurance system. We cannot assign fault uh, for the injury. doesn't mean there may not be. Uh, there can be impacts for large employers in terms of their premiums uh, in relation to those costs. For the small family farm who's paying us less than about $5,000 a year, your premiums have a 5% um, range in terms of how they would fluctuate. Happy to discuss that one-on-one, -on -one, but I think the no-fault is important, uh, and there are not fines for uh, employers if there's a mistake on the job site. We have a culture of safety on Alberta farms. I work there. And there is no amount of legislation that you can introduce that is going to anyway increase my attention or the people I work for's attention to safety. We decide if the job is safe. We make sure we are safe. We decide on the price that we charge. We decide on the hours that we work. 
and we always contain the right to refuse the job. Why can't you make it mandatory for those poor hands to contract their work and obtain their own WCD and put it on them instead of the industry? The 112 families that are begging me for this bill, put it on them, not the industry. No union needed, period. We're not protest protesting the safety aspect of it. We are protesting because it's our right to defend our lifestyle. scared all the young generations away with why like there's no reason how are you ever going to be able to regain their trust after this would you please personally consider voting against the bill and you will win the respect of all farmers in alberta sir and reintroduce it in the new year with full consultation we need changes on the farm we all know that but they want to be part of it be that man of alberta it's not about the party right now, it's about the future of this province and the future of these people. You can say no to this. These people would have... Would you have respect for this man? Yeah. Yeah. Already, record unemployment since the early 90s, I believe. How is this bill going to affect our unemployment rate already? We have friends that have a family farm. They have seven people, including family members, that they you know, classify as employed and wage-earning employees. And it was going to cost them because they have cattle, which instantly skyrockets them into the highest risk category, over $9,000 a year. So, you know, people are saying, sure, if you're going to, you know, force, this, force us to pay this at these rates, they'll pay it because what else can they do? But that's going to mean for these workers that they're not going to get a wage increase, no raises, or they're not going to be able to, um, you know, hire more people. And then the people that you're exempting, the family farms, which is, you know, appreciated, of course, um, but those people are going to work themselves into the ground because they can't afford to hire people. We hang on, a lot of guys lose money in lots of years, we hang on by a thread to cram this thing down our throats and, and raise things. It's very simple. I have a small, I do small square bales. I have 22 employees. I switch to a large square baler, I have five employees. Stuff like this pushes a guy to say, why do I want this many employees? You will lose jobs. Your minimum wage policy will lose jobs in this province. So how do you expect farmers who don't make what you think they make, what oil companies make, to pay for this? How, how are you going to pay for these fines? Um, I deal a lot with the uh, officers that are out in the field. And it's just as important to our officers who work with you that those technical standards make sense because the way we work with industry is if someone's not in compliance, we'll say to them, how can you get in compliance? And so the industry, they tell us, well, we can do this or this. That's gonna be the same situation when we're working with you. These technical standards have to be things that you can work with. And if something's not in compliance, we say, well, how can you get in compliance? And you tell us how you can comply. If your constituents are saying, and let's face it, they're, they're saying pretty strongly, it takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of fire and a lot of earth to get farmers to actually come out to these things. Why then are they not saying, we're definitely going to vote against this, don't worry about those guys, we've got your back. So you're saying what your constituents, the majority of your constituents in a democracy are saying doesn't matter because you have their best interests of it. <laughs> Give people the option for another third party um, insurance policy. Well, what, if that's your main concern right now, why don't you make that a standalone bill? So there are four pieces to this legislation. There is the Occupational Health and Safety Act. There is the uh, Labor Relations uh, Act and also the Employment Standards as well as WCB. So there's four components to it. 
Uh, the first two of those will come into effect January 1st, which is WCB and OHS, the exemption is lifted. Uh, it will be uh, not until the spring that uh, employment standards and the labor relations piece uh, will be proclaimed and the technical requirements for the occupational safety collateral won't be complete until it could be a year, 18 months, depending on our consultations that will continue with you to make sure that uh, we're understanding the uh, important uh, uniqueness of uh, the farming and ranching sector. So it really seems backwards that you would pass and proclaim for January 1st a piece of legislation without attached regulations. And I think that's basically the problem in this room is you're blindly saying, trust us even though we're doing it backwards from the way most legislation goes through. It does exempt uh, farm families whether they're paid or not. I did read that. It doesn't say for how long. Are we exempt oh, no. until next week? Are we as exempt until the bill passes and then you bring in some more amendments? As long as the act is in place. Will you put that in writing? That we will always be exempt? Yes. Answer that. I don't mean today. I mean, will we always be exempt? With numerous emails I have sent, not one reply answered any of my questions, but was responded with words that I heard on the news. Mass response emails everyone received. I'm done trying to be heard. I may stand alone in this today, but I do stand as a business owner, labor, equipment contractor and operator, cabinet owner, mother of far good farm kids, and a wife of an oil field worker and farmer and say no to Bill 6 altogether. More than 1,000 concerned citizens, including farmers, ranchers, and students, gathered at the O.R.E. Cow Palace in Olds to make their voices heard. The five-page Bill 6, with six pages of amendments, was passed into law the following day by the Alberta government. Labor Minister Lori Sigurdsson said the Alberta government would go ahead with the bill but consultation would continue to take place over the coming months to determine the specific regulations that will be enforced by the bill and ensure the unique way of life on the family farm would be preserved. Olds Community TV, your go-to channel for news and information in Olds, Alberta.